Let's take a little break from classes for right now and learn a few other stuff uh, good to know in C++. So let's delete all of that garbage and here we are. Let's learn about C++ arrays. Until now, if you wanted to make 10 integer variables, you probably went ahead and made like 1 and then 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and like that you made 10 separate integer variables. And sometimes making lots of variables in this manner could be annoying, especially if you have hundreds of integers, hundreds of floats and hundreds of characters and stuff like that. So here's a shortcut of how you could make hundreds and as many variables as you'd like all in one shot. Let's say we want to make 10 integer variables. Here's a how I would make an array of 10 integers. I would type int, I would type a name of my array, let's call it my array. Then I would open up a square bracket, type the number of integers I'd like, and then close the square bracket. And of course I will finish up with the semicolon. In C++, when you create a variable and you're using the square brackets, and inside over there you have a number, this will create an array of 10 different of these variables. So right now we have a list of 10 integer variables all stored in this array variable called my array. It's like I created 10 different integer variables all in one shot. How do I start using these different variables? Very simple. My array square brackets and in these square brackets I will type the number of which array I want to use right now. So if I want to use some number in the middle of that array I will type that number and that will give me that specific variable that's in that list and then I could do whatever I'd like with it. I could give that integer 8 and then I could do the same for a different one of those integers in the list. Though here is something very important to realize. When you create an array of variables, you will type right over here the real true amount of variables you would like this array to have. But when you start using that array, and you will want to use, for example, the first or the second or the third of that list, you will not use the real number of that particular variable. For example, if I want to use the first variable, I'm not going to type my array 1. That will not give me the first variable of the list. When I start using my array, I have to go one less number than what I really want. So the first variable is my array 0. The second variable is my array 1. The tenth variable is my array 9. So even though in the creation of this array I said that I want to have 10 variables in this array, but my array 10 will be a bug in your program because my array 10 doesn't, ex doesn't exist. What really exists is everything between my array 0 and my array 9. This is known as offset 0, which means that you start counting up from the actual number 0. So when you type this one line over here, int my array 10 inside of square brackets, <coughs> I'm sorry, square brackets, it's as if you would have manually created 10 variables which are named like this, my array 0 in square brackets, my array 1 in square brackets, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And each one of these ar of these variables behave exactly like a regular integer variable. So you can of, co of course assign some number for it to hold, you can make it increase its value by 1, you can print out the variable to the screen using the cout functionality, and the advantage that we have over here is that instead of creating a hundred different integer variables each having its own name like x x1, x2, x3, or whatever you want to give it, f, and whatever name you're going to give your variables, you can in one simple line create a hundred or even a thousand of integer variables, as many as you'd like, 
and each of those variables specific name is like I showed before that array's name, two square brackets, and any number between zero and the number that you typed, one below the number that you typed when you created it, because everything is offset zero from the time of creation forward. Let's try it out. Right over here I'm creating a array called my array. Of course this can be any valid variable name like X or Z or anything like that. And we are going to make 1000 integers inside of this array and we're going to assign one to the very first of this list which is again the number zero of the list of the array and we are going to give 800 to the second variable of this list which is of course with the number one and to make sure that it works we're going to print that out on the screen to make sure that my array zero has whatever we gave to it right over here and my array one has whatever that is supposed to have let's see that in action and here we go my array zero has one and my array one has 800 everything worked perfectly the very unfortunate thing about using the C++ array is that you can very easily make an un unnoticeable runtime bug by accidentally trying to access one of the variables or one of this array's variables which doesn't exist like for example if I logically thought that my array has a number thousand which logically should make sense because I made an array with 1000 variables in it it makes sense that it should have a my array number 1000 what we forgot is that everything is offset zero so the most that this list has the most variables that this array has is 999 really because that in truth is the number thousand if we start counting from the number zero the unfortunate thing is that any time we go out of bounds and we try to go into a variable that this array really doesn't have such as in this case the number 1000 or if I go even further than, than that 1001, 1002 or even 2000 or whatever we're going to make accidentally the compiler will see no problem at all with that everything will look like a valid C++ code so you will not get any compiler errors whatsoever because the compiler won't pay attention exactly how many variables my array is supposed to have so that every time we go inside we try to access the variables of my array the compiler should make sure that we do the right number the compiler will not pay attention to that it's only during runtime of your program where your program will try to access a piece of memory which doesn't belong to my array at that point your program will have undefined behavior and hopefully will just crash right there and stop the program and if you're not lucky it might crash your operating system and you might have to restart your computer or something we are going to learn better ways of creating thousands of variables all together in one shot without the need of using this very dangerous C++ array but whenever you do re use it for whatever reason make sure your com your program will always try to access it with the correct boundaries starting by zero and ending by one less than whatever this array has because if you go out of these boundaries like if you for some reason accidentally go below zero one or two or nine or whatever or if you go too much above the limit that the limit of variables that this array contains your program is doomed here's an old way of how we used to make arrays of text like for example an array of which I would call my name which would be of course an array of characters so that I can have a variable like this which will contain a string of text like my name anti RTFM on YouTube we used to need to finish it off with this special escape character called the null character so that when we would want to print this string of text to the screen we would know when the text is finished so that we won't accidentally go out of the boundaries of how many characters there are in this array but it's still definitely not the best way of doing this as we'll see in the next video with the standard library string